Good. So before we got started on the, the video, I just do a little quick walk through the back of the bench here, show you some of the things I've been working on. Uh, this is the progress on the Monarch 10 E lathes. Uh, should be moving a lot faster now that I'm wrapping up so many other projects. Uh, one little short run of spoke shaves and scrapers, uh, half scale, Stanley number 9 and number 11. And we're going to make some more vice grips. And this time, instead of nickel plating the vice grips, we're going to go with rhodium plating. Now, here's a plane that sold back in 2005 for over $100,000. And a couple of years ago, I made 15 of them, so I just finished up another, another 15 of them, which will be the last of the second of the production, the last ones I'll do. Still got a few left. Okay, here's a tool I made a few weeks back I wanted to share with you. And uh, it's a copy of a patent by William Brewster, patent number 353242. And uh, using a process that I'll be talking about in the video where you utilize blue painter's tape and super glue to attach pieces together and uh, so what I did by using the blue uh, painters tape and the super glue I attached this steel bar across the back of the backing which enables me to have a strong bond and I can put the mechanism into that steel bar thus making this feature for any back saw without having to modify or drill any holes in the in the saw. Pretty neat concept. Obviously the way it works is you, you loosen the, uh, the, the neural screw and the two brass uh, bars will articulate and raise and lower the bottom steel plate that sets your depth. So if for cutting dovetails or, or depth stops or, or dovetails or dado cuts. Okay, here's a, here's a tool I made that was I'm very excited about. I just wanted to share it with uh, folks out there that have, it, have not run across this. This is called a tangential cutter, or it's commonly referred to as a diamond tool holding. And the way they get that name is the way the cutter is sharpened, which is just regular high-speed steel tool bits. The way it's sharpened, it forms a diamond on the face of the cutting tool. Uh, these were advertised at home shop machinists for years. They're made by a company, commercially they're made by a company down in uh, Australia called Eccentric Engineering. They're, they're not that expensive, around a hundred bucks. But uh, if you Google diamond tool holder or uh, tangential tool holder, and, and the reason it's called that, the point of the cutter, uh, because of the, the geometry of holding the tool, the point of the cutter is in tangent with the, the circumference of the stock that you're turning. And uh, I was absolutely appalled at the difference that it made as far as the, uh, the quick cutting action. The surface finish is just phenomenal on this tool. And uh, it, uh, I was really surprised. So if, you, if you've never used one and you want to give it a try, it's a fairly easy little project to make. I highly recommend it. In the uh, foreground of the picture here, this mechanism is the sharpening uh, jig for grinding the tangential cutters uh, on a normal bench grinder. It's a compound angle. It's offset 12 degrees one way and 12 degrees the other way. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty easy, idiot-proof method for, for grinding these cutters, which is another advantage of this concept of this type of cutter and the fact that uh, there's not a whole lot of complex cutter grinding done. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really easy to, to grind the cutters on this type of mechanism. Okay, here's the, uh, the sanding block. The first style I made was for using open, open 
ended paper like off of a shop roll. The problem was, if you had a tapered end up on them, it would always wear out here and you, you ended up using a lot of paper in the back. So I came up with this style here, which was a cop kind of copy of the plastic once it's on the market, and made one to use a continuous belt. And the splicing mechanism for doing these belts is, is in a, a YouTube video. Uh, you, it can apply to a 6x48 small shop rows or the ones that even go on your little expanding rubber wheels like, like it's built here. Anyway, uh, the, uh, while I'm on the subject of sanding paper, let me mention to you guys that are not aware of it, this belt right here is called a Trizac. They come in uh, different grits. They're made by 3M. Uh, they have a totally different uh, abrasive measuring uh, system than your conventional belts. They're just a tad more expensive, say at a 6x48, but I guarantee you they will outlast a normal conventional belt at least six to eight times. So that little extra cost is well offset. There's your, your grading mechanism of the, of the grit. So they use a, a totally different method, but they tell you what the equivalent standard is. Now, the reason I, I mention this, for guys that do a lot of sanding, polishing on larger areas, if you're going to use a 6x48 uh, type belt, the, the way these Trizac belts are manufactured, there's a layer, an epoxy layer, that's filled and impregnated with little microscopic spears. As the belt wears, it's always exposing new, fresh, abrasive spears. And because all the spears are the same height, uh, it's virtually impossible to have a stray grit that makes a deeper cut than you want, and you have to keep removing materials to get rid of that deep cut. On uh, certain synthetic materials, mother pearl, synthetic ivory, etc., you could get a, with that Trizac, uh, you could get a absolutely flawless uh, sanding mechanism. So if you're not aware of them, I would suggest, you know, check them out. Now, I did a video on this, uh, and while we're on sanding, these are some traditional round sanding discs on the video that uh, is made using telescopic tubing. A uh, company that makes this tubing, I think, is K&S, okay? All the hobby stores and so forth. But the reason I did these uh, custom diameter sand, round sanding uh, discs because you only got two styles, more or less, that's available commercially for your Dremel, you know, customers. So by using the tubing, you're not limited to one particular diameter. Or if you so by uh, by using the uh, custom tubing, you're not limited to the factory available round drum sanders. Here's one I made to fit the slide, the internal slide for cleaning up the casting on uh, my night, miniature 1911s. So again, there's a video out there uh, on the YouTube showing how to make these. And one of the first steps uh, in making them out of the tubing is to use uh, a cutoff deal, a cutoff wheel or sometimes referred to as a separation disc. So let's go into a little overview of that before we wrap it up.